Welcome to today's video, Justice League. What's going on? Today we're going to be talking all about RVing and tow cars. So, do you need one? Is it worth it? And what is our setup for our tow vehicle? Keep in mind that this information is in our experience only. So we're trying to share with you guys what we've experienced during our first full year of full-time RVing. And we hope this helps you with your future journeys. So first, let's define what is a tow car. So I'm personally defining a tow car as a vehicle that you can drive separate from your RV living space. In our experience, there are five main ways that you can bring a tow vehicle along with you on your RV adventure. The first way is the most obvious. If you have a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, that automatically comes with a tow car. It's the truck you're using to haul your living space. The next three ways have to deal with towing it behind an RV. The easiest way to tow your vehicle behind an RV, in our opinion, is by what's called dinghy towing or flat towing. What that is, is you're towing a vehicle behind your RV and all four tires are touching the road. The only catch with this way of towing is you either need a manual transmission in your vehicle or you need to purchase it from a manufacturer that actually allows their automatic transmissions to be flat towed behind something. If you're like us and you don't have a manual transmission tow vehicle, there are two other options that you have to tow your vehicle. The first one is the most expensive and that's to purchase a trailer that your car or vehicle will sit on. And the reason this is the most expensive is because you're buying a big trailer and you also need a bigger RV to tow something this heavy. We mainly see this with Class A RVs, mainly because of towing restrictions with the specific RV, but on our journeys we have seen a few Class Cs be able to tow this way. The second way to tow an automatic transmission vehicle is by using a tow dolly, and this lifts two of the wheels off of the road. We mainly see this with Class A and Class C RVs, but again, on our journey we have seen a few smaller Class Bs tow this way. So this begs the obvious question, do you need a tow vehicle for your RV? Well, obviously if you have a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, we would not recommend towing a vehicle behind that because you already have one that's towing your living space. So that's an amazing advantage that you have if you already have a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. Now, if you have a Class A, a Class B, or a Class C RV, it really comes down to the length of the RV. From our experience, tow cars become really useful when your RV is above between 22 and 24 feet long. So most Class Bs are gonna be less than 22 to 24 feet. Most Class Cs will be in that specific range or higher, and most Class As will be way higher than 22 to 24 feet. The reason we say this is because we have a 28 foot Class C RV, and if it was a little smaller, I don't think we would mind moving it more often or more frequently. So are tow vehicles worth it? In our experience, yes, 100%. It has made our trip 10 times better. And as many of you know, when we first started out, we had a scooter that was actually hitched onto the back of our 28 foot RV and this scooter was hard to take on and off because you had to ratchet strap it and you had to just do all of this stuff that really made it inconvenient to take on and take off. Now, when you pair that with the fact that you couldn't ride in bad weather and you only could go about maybe 40 miles an hour on the scooter, um, it just really wasn't worth hauling it around the country. So as we went up through the Northeast, we had the scooter on the back of the RV, but we decided we need a tow car. So we just went down back down to Missouri and we sold the scooter and the hitch and we picked up our Honda Civic and we have never looked back. If you have a Class A or a larger Class C RV, we would highly recommend getting a tow vehicle, but we would also recommend that you guys weigh out all of the positives and negatives before you make that decision. A lot of you have been asking how we actually tow our vehicle, and if you were counting the ways to incorporate a tow vehicle in your RV adventures, you may have noticed that we only discussed four out of the five options. Well, that's because the option that Jenny and I choose to do actually doesn't have to do with towing whatsoever. It's the fifth option, and that's to just drive a separate vehicle 
from your RV while you're traveling around the country. So there are a lot of reasons why we decided to travel this way. And the first has to do with safety. So the way our RV is designed, it's a 28 foot RV that sits on a 22 foot chassis. So that six foot extension on the back of our RV has a tow limit of only 2000 pounds, which is very low considering the size of the RV and the size of the engine. Our Honda Civic actually weighs 2,300 pounds and it's an automatic transmission so we would actually need to buy a tow dolly as well which would add a couple hundred pounds. So for safety reasons we just decided to drive the car separate and we've been very happy with it so far. The next reason we decided to drive the car separate from the RV is because we've heard stories about how inconvenient it is to have a tow dolly being hauled behind an RV. We've never actually towed this way before, but we've heard nightmare stories about not being able to turn around, not being able to maneuver very well, and it's just very inconvenient to have to put the car on the tow dolly, take the car off the tow dolly, and as you guys know, we like to travel and move the RV a lot. The third and final reason that we decided to drive the car separate from the RV is due to cost. And for this, I'm gonna do a little math, so bear with me. So let's pretend that we're going on a thousand mile trip around the country, right? So our RV currently gets seven miles to the gallon. And if we were gonna tow a tow vehicle behind the RV, let's assume that we lose two miles to the gallon. So first, if we go on a thousand mile trip, at seven miles to the gallon, and we'll assume the average cost of gas is $2. So you take 1,000 divided by seven, and you multiply that by two, and that gives you about $285 to take the RV on that trip. That is without having a tow vehicle. So we're estimating this, but we're pretty sure that including a tow vehicle would reduce our gas mileage down to five miles to the gallon. So if you take 1,000 divided by five, and then you multiply that by two, that gives you 400. So if you subtract 285 from 400, that's gonna give you a difference of $115. So that's $115 difference between having a tow vehicle and not having a tow vehicle, and that's just in the cost of gas. And that's not even mentioning the fact that the dolly that we would have to buy would be 1,000 to $1,500. That's really expensive. Now let's do the math on the car that we have. So we have a little Honda Civic that gets about 35 miles to the gallon highway, but when you're driving it behind the RV, it gets well over 45 miles to the gallon. If you take that same 1,000 mile trip and you divide it by 45 miles to the gallon that we get in our Honda Civic, and then you multiply that by the $2 per gallon, that's only gonna cost you about $45 in gas to go 1,000 miles in that little car. Now in gas alone, that $115 that it would cost us to tow the car, if you subtract $45 from that, that's gonna leave you with a $70 difference just over 1,000 miles. So now you're probably thinking, oh, but if you have two engines and you have two maintenance costs and two oil changes and all that type of stuff, and yes, you are correct, but, when you consider the wear that you put on a small car and the wear that you put on a large RV, I guarantee you the maintenance cost on a small car is far less than the maintenance cost on our RV. Food for thought. So the positives for our towing situation is it's less expensive, it's easier to move, it's safer, and it's also a lot less stressful. So the only negative we can think of with driving two separate vehicles is the fact that you're not riding together. And to be fair, that can be turned into a positive for Jenny and I because it really gives us some space away from living in a small space, even though we normally just brainstorm over two-way radios. Anyway, I'll stop rambling now, but we hope you guys enjoyed this video about the pros and cons of RV tow cars. If you did, make sure to hit that like button below. Also, leave us a comment and let us know what's your tow setup and what works best for you. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, we'll see you on the next video.